Welcome to an introduction to Open Channel Flow. Open Channel Flow is flow down a slope. It's going to be in a channel or in a pipe, but the key is that Open Channel Flow has a water surface that is free to deform. So rivers, aqueducts, and storm sewers are typical Open Channel Flows. Nota bene, this is Latin for note well. A full pipe is not an open channel flow, but a partially full pipe is. So a storm sewer, during its normal design storm, will be an open channel flow. But during extreme storm events, a storm sewer may get backed up, it may be full, and then it will not be an open channel flow, but it will work like pipe flow. So the key difference between a full pipe flow and an open channel flow is in our cross-sectional area. When we're dealing with a pipe, we know what the cross-sectional area of the pipe is. No matter what the flow rate we put through the pipe, we have the same cross-sectional area. But in an open channel flow, the depth, and therefore the cross-sectional area, will change with the flow conditions. Now open channel flow has its notation it can be a little bit different, but sometimes similar than pipe flow. Q is our flow rate. It's going to be in meters cubed per second or cubic feet per second. V is the velocity, meters per second or feet per second. A is our cross-sectional area. We're going to be meters squared or, cubic or square feet. Y is our depth. S sub zero is going to be the channel bottom slope. R sub h, which we're going to define later, is our hydraulic radius. Now there's a lot of jargon in open channel flow, and you're simply going to have to memorize some of this. Now there's three very confusing flow terms that we've simply got to get into our heads before and know them well so that we can talk clearly. The first is steady flow. Steady flow is where our flow rate, our depth, etc. doesn't change with time. So steady flow doesn't change with time. Unsteady flow does change with time. Uniform flow is where our flow conditions change, don't change with space. So a non-uniform flow does change with space. A uniform flow does not change with space. And finally we have a normal flow. Now this is one of those words where we take a common word, normal, and we give it a special jargon definition. A normal flow is where the flow wants to be. Our definition we'll see in class is where the friction forces exactly balance the gravitational acceleration. This is what we consider the normal condition for the flow. Now some more jargon. A gradually varying flow, this is a flow where the changes in velocity and depth occur over long distances in space. A rapidly varying flow, conversely, is where changes in the velocity and depth occur over short distances in space. Now, these two terms can be quite confusing simply because we're used to thinking as rapid and gradual as referring to time, but here we're going to use them as referring to space how the flow changes along the length of the channel. Finally, let's talk about some jargon for depth. Now, depth is the distance from the bottom to the water surface. The normal depth is a particular depth. This is the depth that when the channel is at its normal flow. Remember, we define the normal flow as where the flow wants to be. So normal depth is the depth where the flow wants to be. Not where it is, but where it wants to be, where it friction balances gravitational acceleration. The hydraulic depth is an average depth for a river, river cross section. Finally, we have a hydraulic radius. Now, hydraulic radius is confusing because it's not actually a radius. We consider this to be a unique measure of the relative depth for an open channel. We'll define what this is in class and we'll go over why we use this. So now I wanted you to prepare yourself for class by thinking a little bit ahead. We're going to talk about open channels. We'll initially start with rectangular cross-sectional areas that are uniform in breadth. That is, they don't change going up and down the channel. They're uniform in space. 
So think about this. If the flow rate Q is determined by the upstream rainfall, what factors determine the local water depth? And do you think the deeper water is flowing faster or slower than shallow water? This is the end of the introduction to open channel flow.